my uh, community garden nearby where we got some pawpaw trees. Uh, there's some elderberry. There's actually a fig and a persimmon tree over there. I stopped and grabbed a few of those, but I mainly came here for the pawpaws to bring him because uh, he's going to take me out to a couple of different cool places and food for us. So I want to return the favor and bring some gifts. So uh, I'm going to be picking some pawpaws. Uh, as you can see, Got a couple of goodies in the bag. I'm super excited. Um, and I'm sure he will be as well. Uh, and so now I'm about to go on this uh, seven hour drive to Florida. And where are we at right now? We are in Sarasota at our boy Peter's house. Um, so we process a lot of the fruit for him and prepare it, get it ready for him to just have it on, on the table and at his disposal. Yeah. So homegrown hands. And here we have some alapui or shampoo ginger, as they call it. We do all sorts of stuff with this. Go with you, whole thing, whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can handle the whole thing of this. Uh, it was just for the art. Yeah. The ginger is a poet, so. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Alright, what are we about to do, fellas? Dude, <clears throat> we're about to gather ourselves and go on over to the East Coast. No, that area. On a little guided foray. Our man Scott. Scott? Oh, <coughs> Scott's guiding the foray today. Yes, and the plants are guiding us safely on our journey with Damiana, ginger, and cinnamon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that, by the way. Micro sentience down here too, if you look hard enough. Yeah, there you go. Indigenous microorganisms. Thank you for inviting us into your home garden. It's beautiful back here. Thank you for being the first guest. Uh, on our new docu series out here, and we're just gonna ask you a couple of questions today um, about you, your relationship with food, the soil, and just community. Mm. Can you describe your earliest memory of being fascinated with nature? Uh, eating squirrel stew okay. as a kid and tasting something I'd never tasted before, and asking my dad where it came from, and it's like I hunted for it. And, taught me the whole respect cycle and hunting cycle and why we're why he does what he does and just kind of turned me on to like there's a whole world out there of people engaging with the environment other than a city so. and what, what was it that your father did with the environment outside of being a podiatrist and helping people like within cities he uh, 
stewarded guardians as his father did before and his father's father and father's father's father and uh, um, he was an avid hunter and still is so okay so you got to get those lessons early on as a kid about the importance of life and nature and the, the food web and the cycle of life mm, totally without having to do any hunting so. <laughs> now we just hunt for mushrooms okay well since you talked about your family i'm curious uh how has your family culture influenced your relationship with food and nature yeah so i grew up in a lebanese italian household uh, up until like the age of seven and then switched over to just the Lebanese side of things. So really immersed in like the Mediterranean diet, um, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables and uh, a lot of hummus. So uh, kind of got me into being able to actually see the whole foods in the diet um, and wondering about how they got to the table. Okay. And a lot of that, it was interesting to like note like the focus of being able to make food for myself as I got older and what parts of like the cultures I decided to keep and what parts that my friends and the society influenced me and then realizing like really what makes me feel good as like the third and final step where I'm at right now so beautiful uh, you're a fusion of like two very rich and beautiful cultures you know and so I have to ask is there a tradition revolving around a certain dish or ingredient that like was in your family culture mm. As far as the Italian side, it really is a, it's funny, the tomato. Um, it's, it's something that's so uh, disputed across gardeners within the family and so utilized in like uh, across the board, it's like the cosmopolitan uh, fruit for, for Italians. So it's really just seeing like how Italians can do so many cool things with the tomato. Um, yeah, it's uh, important. Okay. Awesome. And my last question for you today is, how can you and how do you incorporate playfulness and innovation into your work? Okay, this is kind of a funny one. Maybe we can go on tour for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's check it out. So we plant turmeric in March in Florida. And some of us forget about turmeric in our garages. And one of those people and I decided to do a little experiment one of my favorite things in Florida is challenging the Google search and what people have to say about this climate because it's forever changing, uh, as most climates are, but Florida is becoming a little more dry and the seasons are adjusting. So we're doing a little experiment, see what will happen if we plant turmeric now and what will happen harvesting it when we're supposed to plant it. Uh, so that's a little fun thing. I like to keep it playful, trying things off season. And then I work for the Florida Fruit Co-op. Uh, we work with farmers all across Florida and uh, some of our friends and myself harvesting fruit and being able to provide it for the local community. Um, not the most profitable thing, but we're working on it. So uh, we get a lot of food waste and with that comes seeds. And a lot of the times I don't feel necessarily called to picking through all the seeds uh, in my busy life. So I decide to plant them all. And so these here are all sugar apple trees and they're eventually going to become you know, like 20 foot trees, uh, maybe not all together like that. So we'll probably separate them out and keep a few in there. What's going on, everybody? I'm here at my home kitchen in Georgia, and we got some exciting developments from the earlier part in our episode. This is a box of fresh fruits from our friends at the Florida Fruit Co-op and it's full of things like dragon fruit. We've got some variegated pink lemons, some oranges, passion fruit, some of my favorite, meme, sopadilla, uh, and a couple of other delicious things like grapefruit pomelos and these things called star apples. These are fairly new for me um, in my uh, diet. Uh, and like I said, this is one of the exciting things from earlier in the episode. Uh, we are now getting fresh fruits here up in Georgia and we're utilizing them at Altered Bar, uh, the bar page on Instagram and utilizing them in things like syrups uh, and different juices that we'll be making cool mocktails uh, and elixirs with. So if you wanna stay up to date with all of that stuff, you should follow us on Altered Bar, Altered underscore bar on Instagram. Otherwise, you know, you stay tuned for episode two of Flavor Tapestries and other mini episodes where we'll showcase the usage 
of these delicious fruits in action. Uh, I'm just very happy and thankful for Nick and everything and for his participation in this episode and for where this uh, journey goes and where the threads weave us in the wind. Until next time.